Greetings. I thought I would just um, take a quick little tour of my Beltane altar that I have set up in my parlor. thought maybe a few of you might be interested in a couple things that I did a little differently this time. If you have seen my past videos, you may recognize this setup. It's not that different from something you might have seen before. I just make a few little changes, but some things are always the same. Um, the altar is always flanked by the walking sticks belonging to my, my husband on the left and mine is on the right. They were the staffs, they are staffs given to us as prizes, as a matter of fact, um, for we got some kind of prizes from our period encampment at an SA event. But you might notice that on my husband's walking stick on the left, the string of beads that I made um, on a video in the very, in the very, I don't know, one of my earlier videos. So anyway, that's there. Um, I have just real simple dressing on the altar. I'm always a small cauldron where I burn my incense and, um, you know, uh, a, uh, the, the goblet is the same. The pentacle is pretty much the same. Um, a few things are different. That is what I wanted to point out to you today. Number one, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit on this. Okay. Um, you might recognize if you saw my last video, there are the, uh, the stage bundles that I made, especially for Bel Beltane, that I um, used flowers picked from my yard. And they are drying right now, but they're on my altar because I, I usually, anytime I make new anything or use anything new, I usually put it on an altar to uh, charge it or give it a little kind of a boost. Give it a little kind of a boost. Um, oh, you can see also that there's my, my husband's arrows. We also keep our arrows in this room for archery. So that's what you're looking at there. Okay. Um, one thing that is new that I wanted to show you, which was really fun, I had never done this before, is I, in the center here, in the cauldron, I have a maple, a, it's supposed to be a depiction of a maple, it's not a real maple, but I just made this out of a simple white pillar candle, which of course is representing the male, the phallus, the cauldron representing the female, as is usual. And all I did simply was tie a few silk leaves around the pillar candle and added some colorful ribbons coming down as the streamers on a maypole. Um, I'm not actually sure if, uh, I, it dawned on me that, that you might not have, some of you may never have had the opportunity to dance a maypole. So maybe you're not really sure of how it happens. I don't know. I don't want to insult anybody, but um, I've done it a few times, not this year, but I think last year, the year before was the last time I had done it. I did it several times. Um, it is something that is usually used to represent fertility, of course. And um, we have the last several times that I've done it, with my history people, my history friends, we have actually put people in the maypole and wound them up. And what happens is you have the streamers coming out from the pole, the center pole. And uh, the pole is usually about 12 feet long, tall, I think. I think the one we use is about 12 feet tall. The streamers coming out and then people, everyone, there's a person assigned to every streamer, to every ribbon, okay? And every other person going around the circle, we you stretch those ribbons out as far as you can, and every other person turns to go in the opposite direction. So some are going um, <laughs> docile, and some are going wittershins, or some are going um, clockwise, and some are going counterclockwise. Um, and what happens is as you approach, you have music, there's usually music, and you're dancing, you're sort of skipping actually to the, to the music. And what happens is you either go under a ribbon or you go around. So the person, you go in to the left or you go to the right. And what happens is as you meet each person and alternate the where you go, left or right, the ribbons cross. And a braid is formed coming down the pole. 
eventually it gets down low enough that if you're using an actual person down there, they're going to get wound up, actual people, usually a couple, they're going to get wound up in the ribbons. And that is supposed to be very good for fertility. And we've had um, the maple that we used in this group, we used quite a few. It has been used off and on for about 20 years and has a very high record of success with fertility. Okay. Um, the dance is also done symbolically without putting people inside for fertility. Um, if you've gone to the run fair, they usually do it. Um, I'm going to post a picture um, on my Bird and the Crone Facebook page. I actually made, I think I made a little, uh, I'm making a little uh, uh, video there, a little like a um, slideshow. <laughs> with music to show the song that we usually sing when we do the maypole. And um, there's a picture in there of us with the actual maypole. And you can see, um, of course, after you wind somebody up, you have to unwind them. And you have to then, it has to be wound again without winding any person because that's how the, the maypole is stored. If you don't have it wound to store it, you're gonna have an awful tangled mess. So, And it looks really pretty with the different colored ribbons coming down the pole. And you can see that from the picture that I will post. Okay, that's just some little thing that I thought might be interested. One more thing I wanted to quickly show you is if you are familiar with my past videos, um, you may see that this is different in the background on the wall behind the altar here. This is normally where I have my Wheel of the uh, Year plaque and I keep it here most of the time. Well, for this, this Sabbath, I have brought out an actual bust, an actual casting of Green Man. Let me see if I can zoom in on him in a little bit. He's, he's absolutely gorgeous. I got him when I was in Scotland uh, quite a few years ago at the Rosalind Chapel. And if any of you have been to the Rosalind Chapel, you will <laughs> know what I'm talking about. If you haven't been there, you absolutely have to go there or you absolutely have to Google it on the internet and find out about it, read about it. If you are familiar with the uh, the book or the movie, The Da Vinci Code, <laughs> it plays an important part in that book and in the movie, But and you do some, see some glimpses of it in the movie. But other than that, it is just an absolutely fascinating place to be. Um, it is located, Roseland Chapel is located south of Edinburgh in Scotland. Uh, I don't know, less than 10 miles, I believe, south. It's, it's not very far from the city. Um, and it, it's built in the 15th century, most of it. Some things have been added because some things have been destroyed and they have restored some things. But a lot of it is original. And this is not a very large chapel. It's quite, it's sort of small. But anyway, um, just about every inch, I would say, of this chapel is covered in some kind of carving. Um, the ceiling is covered with carving. It's all stone, carved stone. The pillars are carved. The cornices are carved. The, the areas around the windows, all the arches are carved. Everything is carved. The altars, inscriptions, and it is carved with all kinds of things, all kinds of... Um, things that depict stories and symbols and people from the Bible. Um, you know, uh, we have altars for the Blessed Virgin and the Saints, and we have um, um, carvings that relate to different various Bible stories, um, the uh, figures, a lot of figures of Christ, etc. But other than that, there are hundreds, literally hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of actual pagan symbols um, in this chapel, which is so absolutely cool for people, specifically people like me, who came from a Christian tradition, a background, a Christian background, and am now a pagan. And I have not abandoned all of my Christian, um, some of my Christian beliefs are still very much intact. And to see them together in one place is just really cool. It's, it's, it is absolutely, it shows how possible it is um, to to share both beliefs. I mean, people that question that don't know a whole lot about the Celtic tradition. And of course, that's where the, the carvings came from, the Celtic tradition, very strong in that because the country people, a lot of the people in the highlands in the country um, held on to their Celtic beliefs, held on to their pagan beliefs and practices 
long after they were um, introduced to Christianity, and they even after they some of them converted to Christianity, they still held on to those pagan practices and beliefs. That's sort of common knowledge. We all know that. But here we see in this chapel, in Roseland Chapel, an absolute evidence of that. And it is so fascinating. Oh my, it is so fascinating. Again, Roseland Chapel, a little south of Edinburgh in Scotland. This, but this cast is an actual, that I bought, is an actual, made from an actual cast of the, an actual um, green man face in the chapel. There's quite a lot. I think there's a hundred... Over a hundred carvings of the Green Man that they have counted within the interior of the chapel itself. So that's quite a lot of <laughs> quite a lot of Green Man. But anyway, it's very fascinating. I just thought you might like to see it. So anyway, that's really all I had to say today. I just, you know, we all like to look at altars, and mine are kind of boring because I I don't change them up too much. But those are just two little projects that I did that I for for Beltane on my altar. Well, actually three if you count the the uh, smudge ones that I did this year, just to uh, express my feelings at Beltane this year. So anyway, again, I hope you're having a wonderful Beltane. Remembering that Beltane will last, it just is the beginning of Beltane here. It's going to, the season of Beltane will last until it is Litha, right? Okay, so anyway, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for coming to my channel. As always, I'm Rebecca and I wish you blessings.